Um, where are you guys from? Uh, America. 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 So you guys have been living here in Korea for how long so far? Uh, since February. Since We're since June, July. Yeah. And so while you've been living here, here in Korea, what are some mannerisms that you've picked up, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Yeah. yeah. You guys can speak Korean, I assume. A bit. A little bit. Jogum. 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 <laughs> when you're pretending to understand them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Ne to everything. Right. Yeah. I always say, come samnida. Like every single situation. Like yeah. I always try to make my voice a little cute. Annyeonghaseyo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I completely so changed how I dress I when, I, when I moved here. Yeah, just because the stairs, I already get stared at enough. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want more. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't wear anything with my shoulders out or my chest and I don't yeah. that's yeah. just maybe I already if you were, maybe if you wear leggings here like a lot of people will stare at you even more yeah, yeah. yeah I I like leggings <laughs> once that was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> and like that's like my fashion like tube tops crop tops yeah. short skirts mm. that's what I wear in it's New York America, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so I just brought it over here and then I was like wait yeah. I'm from Russia from Russia yeah oh your English accent is very you know <laughs> so fluent I thought you're from America actually no. uh, how long have you lived here you said two years um, when I came here, my personality was kind of, I guess, crazy, but also because I was a high school student, just oh, okay. out fresh. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm just, I found my cool in Korea because everyone is generally just more quieter compared to Russia. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I was like more outgoing and more crazy before I got here, and then now, like, you know, yeah. can't talk loud in the subway, you gotta like act this way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Kansas City, America. I have been living in Korea for five years instead of like waving. Sometimes I bow. You oh, know. you bow. Yeah. Just automatically. Just automatically. <laughs> and yeah. another major one, I think, like in the US, they say yeah or yes. Mm. Like in Korea, they go, mmm. Mm. Ah, oh, like uh, that kind of sounds. Yeah, yeah. So I respond to questions that way, especially with my students. Oh, uh, I see. So when you go back home to America, maybe, and you're responding to your friends about, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> they will probably think it's a little weird because in the U.S. you don't do that. Like exactly, it's yeah, a very yeah, yeah. Korean style response. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. In Korea, you definitely stick to your own circle a lot more. Yeah, like in absolutely. Korea, you more date inside your friend's circle, and like that's of how course. you meet people. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. America, and like Western countries in Europe, it's very normal to just casually go up to somebody and ask, oh, course, hi, yeah. I, I would like to get your information, yeah, you're yeah, interesting. Yeah. Course, yeah. Like. Where are you guys from? Uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? We live in Florida. And how long have you guys lived in Korea so far? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks, okay. So what are some habits that you've picked up from other Koreans, you know, by living in Korea? Um, I think it's just being really respectful when bowing, saying thank you a lot. <laughs> yeah, just being really respectful in general. I see, I see. How about, how about you? Um, saying thank you, like, repeatedly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then completely, like, even when you're saying bye, you're always, like, yeah. waving. But thank you're you. You're waving. I, I think I, I agree with, like, the bowing yeah. kind of thing, you know? And when I couldn't speak Korean at all, I'd just be like, oh. <laughs> Especially if you don't know the language, I feel like it's a good way to, like, yeah, be polite, yeah, yeah. even if you don't know how to say thank you something. Body language, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Body language. Anything else? Maybe like what in public transportation, not talking or whatnot. What, what oh yeah, you're about? very yeah. quiet, and also you have to be very fast because <laughs> be the buses fast. do not they stop. Leave you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing though because they're always on time. They're always on yeah. their schedule, so like, yeah. I respect it. How do people treat you? Um, I've been treated really nicely. Like, there's a lot of people who've gone like the extra mile just to help me out, and I, I really appreciate that. You guys love your time here so far? Yes, extremely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And where are you guys from again? Italy. Italy. And uh, how long have you guys lived in Korea here as students? Uh, six months now. Six months so far. Okay, so in your six months living here as a foreigner, what are some Korean habits that you've started to do? In the restaurants, many things like for calling the waiters, we have to shout like, Yo <laughs> It's not common in Italy. Yeah, we don't shout in Italy. <laughs> I heard here because like in Korea, you have to tell them, you have to shout at them what you want to order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and even calling like Azumoni. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually leave my bag somewhere, like in restaurants. Oh, I leave really? it at the table and maybe I yeah. if I have to go to the toilet, I leave just the bag there yeah. or the 
smartphone, and when I come back, they're still there. Yeah, no, one yeah. no one steals it here. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Do, do, they, do they steal it right away in Italy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it in Italy. Yeah. No way. Leave it there, five seconds, it's gone. <laughs> exactly. Where are you from? I'm from the States. From the States. And how long have you lived here in Korea as a foreigner? I've lived here for about three years. Three years. Very long time, I see. Uh, one of the most important things, especially while uh, out in public, is being quiet. Quiet. Oh. Which is something that's very strange, you don't think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, being quiet on the subways, being quiet on the buses, uh, and learning when correct time to be a little more silent. I see. I see. And you can tell some of the foreigners who have been here longer because they have <laughs> adapted to that sort of a uh, Korean way of life. Yeah, yeah. So becoming more reserved, especially on the like public transportation or that kind of situation. Oh yes. Yeah. I lived in a small town before I moved to Seoul. Oh, really? Where at? In Ulsan. Ulsan. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, near Busan. Near Busan, oh. yeah. About an hour away. <laughs> so uh, you kind of are a representation of foreigners mm -hmm. when you are in a smaller place. And exactly. so, yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. you do have to you have to kind of act Korean yeah. and then and then everyone's like, oh, these foreigners are great. <laughs> we love having them here. I went to visit the States after being yeah. here for only a year yeah. and I was bowing to everyone when I went and visited. I was like, hi, Rich mom. mom. <laughs> Hello, brother and everybody else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also taking and doing uh, the two hand thing when giving things to people. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In uh, Korea, you're, you get judged harshly if you're eating <laughs> on the bus yeah. or if you're talking loudly uh, on the bus. Like People look back and stare at you, especially yeah. if you're a foreigner. Even even Koreans that talk loudly on the bus, they get, yeah, yeah. they get looked at they get by the other at. people and you can yeah. tell everybody else is getting annoyed of with course, them. Of yeah. Do you think you get stared at a lot in general in Korea? Um, a bit. It's, it depends where you live. I feel like if you're in Itaewon or... Uh, an area that has more foreigners is has a younger crowd than not as much but if you're like yeah. in an older like a countryside then you definitely get looked at a bit yeah, more yeah, and and kids yeah. will be like oh wegook saram like foreigner <laughs> dad and mom look yeah 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 but I feel it's not as bad for uh, a white person as it is for African Americans. For African -Americans. Like I feel they get judged more. Like I had some friends that oh, definitely really? they could like. It's just a different, they have different stereotypes, you know. So. You love your time in Korea here so far for the five years you've been here. Oh yeah, there's there's pros and cons to every country, you know. So yeah, but I I think overall Korea is a very very good country. Uh, a lot of good people. Yeah, good food. Yeah, good food. <laughs> Uh, ladies in the metro, in the subway or in the bus uh, yeah. told me to like shut, shut down. Up. Shut up? Uh, yeah, they absolutely, told you guys to absolutely. Shut up? Yeah. Yeah, but even on the bus. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys um, enjoyed your six months here so far? Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you for coming out today and we'll give yeah. it a thumbs up. And, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Another thing, well, maybe fashion or something, or maybe caring about your external looks. It's very important here, especially in Seoul. Yeah, yeah, people are always like, what are you wearing? What's everybody wearing these? How is it in Ulsan? T-shirts. 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 T-shirts and sweats. T-shirts, leggings, sweats. <laughs> yeah. You got Pajamas. A, yeah. You got a lot of high schoolers there, yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. just trying to live at I this see. point. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank and then you'll give me a thumbs up here. No. Oh, I became vegan. Vegan? Yeah. Oh, you became vegan while you are here? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. What, what made you become vegan? There's been like a trend. When I came here, yeah. there have been a lot of new vegan places opening up mm -hmm. and my friends were already vegan, oh, I so see. they kind of introduced me. Are your Korean friends or yeah, foreign Korean friends? Oh, okay. Friends, yeah. That's interesting. Must be hard to, you know, control that, you know, desire for michi. You got samgyeopsal, you got bulgogi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, plus my, um, when I go back home, babuli is always like, why are you not eating meat? Come on, this is like, this is what you gotta eat. Or do Russians, like, um, in their culture, do they eat a lot of meat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for coming out today, and you'll give a thumbs up. Thank yeah. You. All right. Yeah, I mean, I definitely try to keep it down, like on the subway and on yeah. the bus and stuff. I'm loud, so like, <laughs> even one night, me and Herb were hanging out at the Han River, and like, we were just wow. laughing, kiki keen it up, <laughs> and we would always get like glares. I'm like, okay, yes. I get, I'm a little outspoken. I get yeah. it. <laughs> And, well, you guys yes. love your time here in Korea so far. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't want to leave. I've enjoyed it too, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Give me a thumbs up and yeah, we'll get you on your way. <laughs> Subscribe and like. Subscribe, like. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Once again, I'm Sean.
If you guys like this kind of video, let me know in the comments down below. And let me know what other kinds of videos you want to see about life in the US or American culture in general. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye. 열심히 영어 공부를 하시는 분이라면 Serious Learners Membership에 가입해 보세요. 여러 가지 레벨이 있는데 멤버십 혜택 중에는 한영 대본 한영을 자유롭게 설정할 수 있는 영상 그리고 영어 발음을 위한 쉐도잉 시리즈도 있습니다. 관심 있으시면 아래 설명 참고해 주세요. Good. Hello everyone. I'm Sean and please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm sure you guys recognize these two young boys. They've now become very popular here in South Korea. And I've actually made two really popular videos with them. They've done really well. I want to take this time and catch up with them. Like, how's life been since our last viral video together? So first things first, you guys have grown so much. Have you seen your old videos and does it feel weird to watch them? I'm like this big, I'm like super small, but now now I've grown so much, it's crazy to see that I've grown that much in just three years. One of the most noticeable things is your voices have changed. You two, and especially you. Yeah, like, I, I can't <laughs> tell the difference because it's like gradually changing, but other people that uh, meet me like, oh my god, your voice has changed. You used to be like so squeaky. <laughs> yeah, right. Now you've been going to school here for six years, and you're going to like public school in Korea, right? Mm -hmm. You're the only non-Koreans in your class, is that correct? Yeah. Most of your input, most of the language that you hear among your friends, when you watch TV, when you listen to the radio, it's all Korean. Has keeping up with English been like a difficult thing? Like, do you feel like Korean is more natural? Is it more comfortable to speak Korean? I feel like for you it might be more comfortable, right? Yes. Yes, is that correct, my guess? Yes. Yes. When we're at home, we're still speaking English with our parents and like I've got some foreign friends that I'll play video games with, we still speak English then. There are a lot of places and like times that we still use English. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not like we're not forgetting English, it's not hard to keep up with it. Yeah. But especially for Mac, yes. when he was in America he was too young and like he's basically grown up in Korea. Like so he's said many times that like Korean is a lot easier for him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Because for me, it's still English is a lot easier. Really? Yeah. You got here when you were six or seven? Six. Six. So you're literally 50% of your life in Korea, 50% of your life not in Korea. And you came to Korea when you were 10? Yes. Okay, so you're, you're 16 now? Yeah. 영화나 드라마 볼 때는 미국 생활에 대한 거 충격 적인 거 혹시 있나 약간 culture shock 그런 순간 있어요? 지금 한국에서 너무 오래 살았으니까 와 미국인 미국에서 사는 사람들이 저렇게 하는구나 약간 그런 거 혹시 있나요? 아 하나 있는 거 같아요. 오케이 okay. 미국 학교 영화 같은 걸 보잖아요. 음. 급식으로 막 햄버거나 파스타 <웃음> 뭐 피자 먹고 있거든요. 근데 한국 <웃음> 이제 그냥, 그냥 도시락에 그냥 건강한 거막 밥이랑 국이랑 그게 있어가지고 미국 급식이 좀 부러워요. <웃음> 아 부러워요? 한국이 더 좋아요. 한국 음식? 급식이. 급식. 원래는 미국 음식은 자기가 집에서 싸고 이렇게 가져가서 먹잖아요. 음. 근데 그러면은 음식 고민해야 되는데 급식을 먹으면 음식 고민도 안 해야 돼요. 근데 미국 학교에서도 저 개인적으로 학교 다녔을 때 피자. 샌드위치 학교에서 이런 거 팔았어요 학생들한테 그런 거 좋은 거 같아요? 아니면 지금 뭐 밥이랑 뭐 고기랑 이렇게 네. 먹는 것도 좋아요? 그게 더 좋아요 김치랑? 네 <웃음> 미국 볼때 주로 학교 생활만 생각하는 거 같아요? 학생이니까? 
아 아니 컬처 쇼크라고 말했을 때는 그냥 그게 생각이 나 거예요. 그거 빼고는 문화가 달라서 놀란 건 없는 것 같아. 네 지금 한국어로 얘기하니까 편해. 무리 있어요. 아예 편하잖아. 알겠어, 알겠어. 조금 더 편해요. 조금 더 편해? 아, 솔직히. When you discuss like your emotions, oh my god, I'm so angry, I'm so sad. You're talking to your friend. That girl, she's pretty. Why does she not answer my texts? Does it feel more comfortable to express yourself these emotions in English or Korean? Korea has like I'd say probably thousands of words just for feelings or like noises or like things like that. Like they've got a bunch of very descriptive words, but it really it depends. If I'm complaining, like let's say mom said no more video games, and I'm mad about that, I'm talking to I Mac. Korean. Then I like use Korean. <laughs> uh, or if I, yeah, if I'm talking to a school friend, then I use Korean. Okay. But what if like. I don't know. I had some kind of problem, and I'm complaining to my parents. Then mm -hmm. I use English. I mean, I don't have one that's more comfortable. I just use whatever language is like whoever I'm talking to. I just use that language. Ah. I don't. They're the same for me. So you you like water? Just, yeah. I go with the flow. Go with the flow. You're like you go into the cup. You go into the bowl. Okay. I guess with you two, it's really interesting because you're both bilingual. So when you talk to each other, it's mostly Korean. Well, it depends on who starts the conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I think you know what he's trying to say. Early, yeah. <laughs> like earlier, I said like I'm more comfortable in English, right? Yeah. So if I have something I want to talk to Mac about, I'll just start talking to him in English, and we'll talk in English. Mm -hmm. But if Mac, since he's more comfortable in Korean, if he has something he wants to talk about, he'll come to me in Korean, and we'll just talk in Korean, like. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I mean, sometimes we'll use like half Korean, half English, and like mix it. If someone compliments Korea or Korea does something well in the news, do you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm part of that. Like mm -hmm. when, when they say like like um, America has ten thousand cases and Korea has like a thousand cases of COVID, then I feel good because I helped wear a mask. Like I I'm part of the reason that we only have a thousand cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You agree? Yes. Yeah. So you guys for the past three years have done a lot of stuff. You've been on TV. You've been on other really big YouTube channels. I think Asian Boss, right? Yeah. That was great. I love what they do. And you're kind of becoming more well known even just in Korea, like entertainment. And you, you still want to go down this path. Does that feel good? Is it, do you like the way this is going? Yes, I do like what I'm doing, like mm. modeling or like filming. It, it's actually fun to do it. It's like okay. you get new friends, you get to see yourself. But one bad thing, mm. it's not like bad bad thing. It's just like why when when friends like introduce you, they don't say, "Oh, he's my friend." He just says, "He's in TV." Uh, it's just kind of funny the way like sometimes they'll introduce us of like, yeah, he's the kid from TV, like he's super famous. I'm like, hey, no, I'm embarrassed, but mm -hmm. no, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Do Do you ever feel sometimes that you just want to hang out with your friends and you just want to be John and Mac and you don't want to have that title? Do you ever feel like that or no? Well, it's like I mean, never a problem. We're not that famous yet. I mean, like, still, people recognize you probably. Right? Uh, sometimes, but like, yeah, I, I've never had that before. Okay. Yeah. Like, I love playing basketball. We've got a giant like public basketball thing in front of our house. Cool. No one has ever recognized me like just playing there. Like sometimes the Seoul people recognize us, but I've never not wanted to be famous. Like, it's lots of fun to do filmings and. You get to meet like cool people like you. Like, oh, stop <laughs> it. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah, so it, even in the future, I want to keep doing this. It's fun. That's so good to hear. I'm so happy that you guys enjoy this whole thing. And... All right, guys, thank you so much. Please follow them on Instagram, YouTube. I will put their links down below. You can follow them. They have a new Instagram, so definitely check them out. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sean. What's your hobby? My hobby is playing the guitar. So in this video, Cody, a new host for the channel, asked several Americans the question, what's your hobby? If you're looking for real, living, breathing English, this is the channel for you. And real quickly, for serious English learners, definitely consider joining the membership. I provide both English and Korean scripts for all the videos, and silver members get access to videos where you can freely turn captions on and off. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Take it away, Cody. Hi guys, my name is Cody and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. In my free time, I like to go to the gym. Let's see how other Americans respond when we ask them, what are their hobbies? Here we go. So Katie, what's your hobby? My hobby is yoga. What made you start yoga? I first started yoga in my first year of university and I started it to help with stress reduction as well as help myself maintain a healthy lifestyle. How long have you been practicing yoga? I've been practicing yoga for about five years now and like I said I started it my first year in school. Wow, that's a really long time. Where do you practice yoga? I practice yoga in a studio about three times a week and I do what I can to get outside so I can practice out in the environment. Wow. That's really cool. So Cheryl, what's your hobby? I love to hike. Wow, what made you get into hiking? So I live in Phoenix and there's so many places to go hiking in this area and it's just beautiful. Nice. How long have you been hiking for? 30 years. Wow. Phoenix being so hot, when do you hike? Um, I usually go out mid-morning. The heat doesn't bother me so much. So it's nice and quiet and I get the trails to myself and I love it. Is there a favorite trail that you have? Trail 100 is my favorite. Where is Trail 100? Um, it's on the other side of this mountain and it goes for about 45 miles. Wow. Thanks, Cheryl. You're welcome. So, Webb, what's your hobby? Uh, playing tennis is my hobby. I really do love it. Why did you start playing tennis? So, when I was about eight years old, I went with my cousin to uh, Indian Wells, and I really just fell in love with the game. And it's just such a good, you know, like, activity that I just love playing every day. Where do you play tennis? Uh, I play at Camelback, uh, on, right on the Camelback Mountain. It's that uh, mountain that kind of looks like a camel, you know? Uh, I really just uh, started playing there a few years ago and I uh, even like fell more in love with the game. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks, Webb. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So Alfredo, what's your hobby? Love to paddleboard. Nice. What got you into paddleboarding? A few years ago, I went to Montana and uh, paddleboarded there, some really nice lakes. And uh, when I got back to Phoenix, I was like, I have to get one. I got one and uh, it's been a really, really fun time. Really fun. That's great. How long have you been paddleboarding for? A year or so, about a year. A lot of different cool places out here for sure. Do you have a favorite spot to paddleboard? Uh, my favorite spot would have to be Mon back in Montana, but uh, there's some cool lakes in Canyon Lake. Uh, we've been up north to uh, Payson, obviously Tempe Town Lake. Uh, a lot of places out here in Arizona. That's great. Thanks, Alfredo. You're very welcome, guys. See ya. So, Thomas, what's your hobby? Uh, my hobby is golf. That's great. What got you into golfing? Originally, I got into golf as a to drink with my buddies, all my work buddies, on our days off. And so I started playing golf pretty much when I turned 21. I played a couple times before that, but I never like got into it as much as a kid, you know? I was with my, played with my dad a couple times as a kid, but wasn't huge into it. And then I turned 21 and I went with uh, a couple of my work buddies. And it was like one of the funnest times I've ever had. We like played a quick uh, twilight round after work one day at like four o'clock. And we 
had to like rush to get in all the the whole 18 holes. Couldn't finish it even in time, but still one of the funnest times I've had. And ever since I've been playing like pretty much weekly as much as I can. How long have you been golfing for? Uh, just about coming up on four years now. About four years, and I think I'm probably the best out of our friend group, and I've been playing the shortest amount of time. Heck yeah. I like to say, at least. Nice. Any hole-in-ones? Not yet, no. Not yet, unfortunately. We're working on it, though. Well, thank you, Thomas. Thank you. So, Jack, what's your hobby? Um, I like to do woodworking. Wow, that's great. What got yeah. you into woodworking? Um, getting close to um, retirement age. Uh, not quite there yet, and I uh, was thinking about I needed to do something when I retired. I don't want to get another job. I want to do something that I enjoy doing, and I enjoy doing woodworking. So, gonna try to make it into a little business, and uh, when I retire, it'll be there. So, yeah, that's nice. it. Retirement, getting old, need something to do. <laughs> nice. How long have you been woodworking? Uh, a little over a year, year and a half. Um, yeah, about a year and a half. Do you have any examples of your work? As a matter of fact, I do. This is going to be a little mini cutting board. Uh, just, just laminated pieces of hardwood, um, some dark woods, cherry, some maple, light woods, uh, clamped together with waterproof glue, and then sand it down and then route it on the edges. Cutting board. Very cool. Just like I made for your grandma. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. So Brent, what's your hobby? My hobby is growing vegetables. Nice. What got you into growing vegetables? I started growing flowers first, then I decided it was better to grow something that I could eat. Nice. So I transferred over to vegetables. That's really cool. How long have you been uh, growing vegetables? About 15 years. Nice. Uh, what types of vegetables uh, are you currently growing? Um, we have sweet potatoes, um, black-eyed peas, cow peas, watermelon, um, okra. Soon I'll plant broccoli and cauliflower, and spinach and lettuce and things like that. Nice, that's great. As the weather starts to cool off, I'll be able to plant more and more stuff. Wow. So really in Arizona, the growing season is the fall and the winter and the spring. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, thank you, Brent. Yes, you're welcome. So Tim, what's your hobby? Oh, I collect and play with tractors. Wow, that's great. What got you into collecting and playing with tractors? Oh, about five years ago, I was watching some late night television and uh, I saw a, a show on antique tractors and that kind of put the bug in me. My um, father grew up on a grape ranch in Fresno, California. My mother grew up in Pandora, Ohio, growing tomatoes and corn on a farm. And uh, so I have those roots and uh, I decided at that point, you know what, I'm going to buy a tractor. So I uh, looked in the ads and I found one and I, my first tractor is a John Deere 70 and once you buy one, um, the, uh, I kind of got bit and uh, I'm up to four. How long have you been collecting tractors? Oh, I've been collecting since uh, about 2015, so about uh, five, six years I started, I got my first one. and. One leads to another, and I'm to, up to four. Hi. Nice. Well, thank you, Tim. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see some videos of me showing you Phoenix and also teaching you tennis, follow my YouTube channel, Tennis Coach Cody in Phoenix. See you all later. Back to you, Sean. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Once again, I'm Sean. Did you guys enjoy this video? What other videos do you want us to make in the United States or other countries even? Let us know in the comment section down below. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Sean. And I'm George. 
And today we're gonna to show you some situations where American English is very different from British English. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, I ate too many biscuits and fizzy drinks and now my stomach hurts. Oh, I had too many cookies and soda and now my stomach hurts. Put your luggage in the removal van so we can take it to the new flat. Hey, put your luggage in the moving truck so we can take it to the new apartment. Did you hear? They're building an off license next to the college. Sounds like a bad idea. Did you hear? They're building a liquor store next to the high school. Seems like a bad idea. Any idea if this underground station has a loo? Any idea if this subway station has a bathroom? Can you get me the dummy? It's in the baby's cot next to the pram. Hey, can you give me the pacifier? It's in the baby's crib next to the stroller. Hey, I'm gonna pop by the corner shop on my way home. Do you need anything? Hey, I'm gonna stop by the convenience store on my way home. Do you need anything? No, no, no. Never wear trainers with braces. You look ridiculous. Never wear suspenders with sneakers. I think there's a car park behind the shopping center. Hey, I think there's a parking lot behind the mall. Do you fancy watching the football match on my new TV? Hey, do you want to watch the soccer game on my new TV? I used to skip a lot when I was in primary school. Oh, I used to jump rope a lot when I was in elementary school. This was a really fun comparison. Yeah, it was really interesting looking at the differences between British English and American English. One thing that really sticks out to me is fizzy drinks. Oh yeah. yeah. We never say that. We say soda or some people say pop, uh -huh. soda pop, yeah. uh, but fizzy drinks. It's, it's so interesting to see like another country, even though, you know, English is from England. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> so. it's just, Yes, <laughs> it's interesting to see another country's like take their approach to yeah. labeling things. Watching American shows, I learned a lot of Americanisms, like right. soda. See, that's an interesting point, and you mentioned this many times while we were preparing for this video, how English people watch a lot of American media movies, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of like cross influencing going on. Yeah. And even you said it now, a lot of American isms mm -hmm. are creeping into British English. Is, right. that, is that true? Yeah, and even with uh, pronunciations. Mm. So, for example, the older generation would tend to say schedule, but nowadays I would say like 99% of the younger generation would say schedule, me included. Um, um, so, your mom would say schedule? Yeah. You, this might be hard for you to feel as a, an Englishman, mm -hmm. but for us Americans, whenever we hear like British English, especially from England, it feels just automatically like upper class. Uh, yeah. It feels like smart, educated, wise. Yeah. So that's why when like you see a movie, a Hollywood movie, many times the very smart, cunning characters they speak with an English accent. I mean, if you if you travel around the UK, you uh, soon realise that those accents aren't that common. Uh, yeah, you'd often hear like bottle of water instead of bottle of water. Um, and particularly if you go to the north, you'd hear a lot of dialect words. It depends on, on where you go. Another thing that really surprised me is off licence. Oh, off license. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, I, I love the way you say it. Off license. <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds like a pretty different word. Yeah. I don't know why it's called off license. I guess it's has a hazard. I guess I think um, just because they have a license to sell alcohol. Uh -huh. So, so I why is it off? I license? don't know. Maybe it's off the beaten track. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know why we've got off in there. Yeah. Um, you mentioned before, like, and I totally agree that it seems like American English is very, like, straightforward and yeah. literal. Like, liquor store. Yes. You know? <laughs> off, yeah, liquor store, off license. Off license, 
you probably wouldn't be able to guess what that is. Whereas liquor store, you know, alcohol, okay, store, shop, right? Yeah. I understand. Sidewalk, okay, you walk on the side of the road. Pavement, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to guess what that is. Yeah, right. All right, well, I think this was a very interesting comparison and I hope you guys watching enjoyed it. If you haven't already, definitely check out George's channel. I will link it down below. Um, I make videos about well, just traveling in Korea and um, I also make videos about Korean culture and things like that. So if you're interested in that, check out my channel. Right on. Cool. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, how's it going? It's Sean. In this video, I'm introducing yet another host to the channel. His name is Charles, and he's from Oregon in the United States. In this video, Charles is going to take you on a tour of a big American supermarket. Along the way, he will explain some of the differences between Korean and American supermarkets. I think you guys are gonna really like this video, and of course, it will improve your English listening. Without further ado, let's begin. Take it away, Charles. So I was thinking about what to make for dinner tonight, and I decided on baked gnocchi with broccoli. And gnocchi is like a potato pasta, it's this like really good, textured, it's almost squishy pasta, very similar to like a rice cake or something like that. And so I don't really have much of the ingredients here. So I'm gonna have to go to the grocery store. I'm gonna go to the store. I'm gonna go to the store. So what we're gonna actually need for the recipe is gnocchi, broccoli, some stock. I'm gonna be using vegetable because I'm gonna have this be a vegetarian dish. Uh, cream cheese, mozzarella cheese, and then red pepper flakes if you want them. I'm going to use a ton. I personally like a kick in all of my food. So let's go see what an American grocery store is like. Babe, do we need anything else? Nope, we're good to go. So one of the cool things about an American supermarket is they're massive. This one happens to be open 24 hours. So whether it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon, it doesn't matter, it's always gonna be open. So one of the first things on the list is fruit. And so the fruit section here is massive. This side, this side behind it, right over here, the other side of that, that's all fruit. And most of the stuff is seasonal. Of course, a lot of the stuff is sold year round because they're made in greenhouses. Let's get some oranges. First on the list. Here's something wild that Korea has and America have, but it's not the same. Oreos. Now in Korea, Oreos have marshmallows. In the United States, there's no marshmallows. The next thing we need Broccoli. Broccoli's the size of my head. Next to the vegetable section is gonna be the cold noodles, tofu, and kimchi, sausages, stuff like that. There is one non-food item that is in every grocery store, no matter where you go, and that's cards. Whether it's birthdays, anniversaries, just a thank you. People give each other cards all the time, and for everything. Marriage, ones for dad, stepdads, for your brothers, grandsons, birthdays, just a general congratulations, even if you end up getting a new home, there's a card for everything. Now then the next thing on our list is stock. You can use chicken or beef stock, whatever stock you'd actually like, but I need vegetable stock. So let's go. Now 
Now, America likes its beer so much, it gets its own room. It's so cold. Ooh, very similar to places like Europe, Korea. Alcohol is a big part of the culture, and wine is where we go big. All of those aisles are just wine. And you can get everything from Syrahs, Chardonnay, Merlot. They even come in boxes. There usually will always be an Asian section of the grocery store. So there's never a Korean section or a Chinese section or a Japanese section. Typically it all falls under Asian foods in general, and it always starts with rice. And my personal favorite. Frozen foods are really big in the United States for convenience. A lot of people work all day long or all night long, and so frozen foods a lot of the times are the easiest way to eat, especially if you don't really know how to cook, which is kind of common. So we actually have a pretty big section on frozen food and it's got everything from everywhere. Now this is a fairly simple recipe, and so the only things that we really have left is the cream cheese, the eggs, and the milk. And dairy is always put together. So whether it's coffee creamer or milk, heavy creams, whipped creams, cream cheese, cottage cheese, anything that's dairy is usually gonna be in the same section. Canned foods are really, really popular in the United States. So there's typically Everything from peas, corn, collard greens, spinach, mushrooms, beans, artichoke, even potatoes, all in cans. So for fruit, we'll even have pineapple, pears, peaches, cranberry, a medley of fruit, and just about anything you can think of it's probably canned, and probably in this supermarket. The meat section is typically big and separated by beef, pork, chicken, and then a lot of prepared meals are also in that same area. So if there's sushi, or if there's maybe fried chicken or something, it's probably gonna be in that same section as where you're gonna find the meat. In America, especially the southern regions and then the coastal sides, there is a lot of Hispanic or Latino people and culture here. So one of the things that we definitely have in every single supermarket is a Hispanic or Latino section. Tortillas, masa, hominy, beans, even classic things like jarritos, which is a classic drink, flavored soda, but usually fruit so lime mandarin mango my personal favorite in fact i think i'm just gonna take one of these all right that's it guys time to check out i think we got everything Alright guys, thank you for joining me on a trip to an American grocery store. All we got now 
is to go home, cook it, and it's gonna be delicious. So thank you for joining me, and follow me on at Chasing the Shutter on Instagram, YouTube. Hope to see you guys on this channel, and back to Sean. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. What other kinds of videos do you want to see in the US? Or even in other English-speaking countries like the UK or Australia? Let me know in the comments down below. Once again, I'm Sean, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sean. In this video, I evaluated the English ability of my subscribers. I asked them several questions ranging from easy to hard, and I collaborated with an IELTS English speaking test evaluator to give you guys real and constructive feedback. I think this video will be tremendously helpful for those studying English. And I just want to say that if you are a serious English learner, I definitely recommend joining my YouTube membership. Members get access to full Korean and English scripts for all the videos, and silver members get access to videos where they can freely turn Korean and English subtitles on and off, along with a ton of other member benefits. Now, without further ado, let's begin. We're gonna start easy and then we'll, we'll slowly get harder and harder. So what's your name? My name is Kwak Byung-won. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have an older brother. He's um, older, three years older than me. <laughs> three years older than you? Okay. Yes. Uh, when is your birthday? My birthday is February 21. And I born in 1998. <laughs> 1998? Yeah. Oh, wow. You're very young. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not that young. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> that makes me feel bad. <laughs> Can you tell me about your best friend? Who is your best friend? My best friend is Chewon. <laughs> she, she, her name is Chewon. Okay. And she is yeah younger than me. Okay. How did you guys and, meet? Uh, we met in academy. Why do you guys get along so well? Our personality is um, similar and she is very fun. I like funny people and I like interesting things. Um, her acting and her humor is very my type. Yeah. She sounds like a yeah. very uh, fun person. Do you like dogs more or do you like cats more? Um, cat. Why do you like cats more than dogs? Mm, because cat is more <laughs> elegant. <laughs> elegant. Dog is too much acting. <laughs> when I was young, dog dog follow me and he uh, he uh, he he tries to bite me, so I little scared the, about dog. Oh, so a dog tried to bite you when you were young? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you don't like dogs. That's good. Okay, I, I actually I have, I have a similar story. Me too. But for mm. me, for me, it's the opposite. I like dogs, oh. but I don't like cats because I had a bad experience with cats when I was young. Cat scratch you? Yes. You? Yes. Ah, oh, I see. Cats are scary. What's your favorite season? Ah, uh, season is four. It's a windy day and the weather is very nice. Uh, the wind is very cool, so I like four. And next is winter. I like cold or cool day. Oh, so you don't like summer? Yeah, I hate summer. Oh, wow, okay. I don't like sweaty, hot, no. <laughs> so if you had a time machine, how would you use it? I don't want to change the past or future. It's dangerous, yeah. right? Yeah, there are many uh, telling story in many drama or movies. You cannot change the past or future because it makes many people danger. So sure. I want to just see. Yeah, that's great. Really, really good job. 
with Gyeong Won Won, she sounds very comfortable speaking English and that is evident with the length of the sentences that she makes. She did have one or two difficulties articulating her experiences specifically with the dog but was able to be understood nonetheless. She did an excellent job in describing some of the characteristics that she loves in her best friend. I would suggest that she make use of articles more often which is a, an and the. These just allow for sentences to sound a little bit more natural and more structured. For example, saying we met at the academy as opposed to we met at academy. But nevertheless, she was able to form simple sentences using the correct nouns, adverbs and adjectives um, despite one or two difficulties in articulation. So hello, what's your hello. name? My name is Sol. Uh, Sol, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do for fun? Um, recently, I started to invest money <laughs> as a hobby. Oh, that's a good hobby. Making money is always, is always good, right? Yeah. But before that, I used to hang out with friends, you know, before coronavirus. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I'm an only child actually, so I don't have any brothers or sisters. Did you enjoy being an only child or was it a bit lonely when you were younger? Do when you wish was, you had brothers or sisters? When I was young, I didn't, you know, jealous of other people who have lots of sisters and brothers and siblings. But when I, you know, become older and older, and I realized having siblings is, you know, I think it's better than being an only child. So now I'm lonely, lonelier than before. What do you, you what do you usually do on the weekends? On weekends, I usually hang out with my boyfriend. Okay. And yeah, so <laughs> I go to movie theaters and also Sometimes we go to hiking oh. for fun, yeah, on weekends. Very nice. Why do you so, get along with your boyfriend so well? Because it's yeah. because I'm actually my hometown is Tusam, and also my boyfriend's hometown is also South Area, which is Gyeongju. Yeah. So when I come <clears throat> to that academy. I can hear my, you know, um, usual dialogue in Korean. Do you know it? Sure, the dialect, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, the dialect, okay. So because you heard this familiar accent, familiar dialect, exactly. you yes. guys were able to bond. Yes. That's great, that's a good answer. Okay, we're gonna start to get a little bit harder. Okay. <laughs> if you were going to give advice to your friends who are single, who are looking to mm -hmm. meet a nice guy, what would you say are some important things to look for when choosing a romantic partner? What would you, how would you advise your friends? The best um, person is be like have in common and also um, have a lot of things to talk about. Yeah, okay, so things in common, that's the most important thing. Yes, that's the most important thing. And also, okay. second of all, okay. uh, he should be have fine looking. <laughs> he should look good. <laughs> yeah, he should look good. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> so appearance is important. <laughs> yes, I'm having a mask, so I can say that. Yes. Okay. What is the greatest environmental danger in the world nowadays? I think it is the earthquake, especially in Korea. Why do you why do you think that's the number one danger? Because um, when it happens, then everything, every building is collapse. Is that a correct for collapse? Yes. So, so every building is be collapsed, and also the road itself is going to be like this, like in the road is like from is like that. Okay. Okay. And, I, I and understand. People will be, you know, yeah. fall into that, you know, that hole and, and die. Oh no! Yeah. If there's an earthquake in Korea, it would create a lot of problems, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, a few years ago, there was a Gyeongju earthquake, and it was very, very serious one. And we also heard many earthquakes in Japan. Okay. I'm worried uh, about it. Are there many earthquakes in Korea? Like recent, recent one, I haven't heard of it. But you know, there's a few earthquakes in Korea. Okay. Lately, I'm not sure about that. So thank you so much for uh, for fine. for helping me, Seoul. I'm uh, honored. I'll let you go, let you sleep. You can see this video uh, this month. I will upload it. Seoul sounds immensely confident and comfortable speaking and answering questions in English. This was evident in answering the question specifically relating to finding romantic partners. She sounds quite advanced and is almost as natural as a native speaker. She has a very neutral accent and makes good use of grammar as well as being able to properly articulate with a broad vocabulary. She did have some difficulties um, answering the question in relation to earthquakes, which would be a more advanced or general question. I would encourage Saul as a higher level student to just um, continue reading and listening to different topics such as earthquakes to um, broaden her vocabulary, but overall has a good pronunciation and articulates well. All right. Hello. Can you please introduce yourselves? Yeah. So, Kitty, can I introduce myself first? Okay. And you second? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to meet you. And uh, I'm Songhyun from Busan. And uh, I was born in 1891. So, I'm 41 years old. <laughs> and uh, I'm office worker in nuclear power plant site and uh, you were born in you were born in 1981 right? yeah 1981 yeah, okay. So, okay yeah recently recently i made my english nickname as june because i was born in june and it is easy to pronounce and remember before june my previous nickname was tommy but i thought that uh, tommy looks like sexy young guy but I'm not still young, so okay. I changed my English nickname. And okay. As I mentioned, I'm office worker in nuclear power plant site. But oh wow! I'm not in, in Busan? But yeah, in Busan. Oh and cool. I'm dealing with. Daddy, uh, isn't your office in Busan? Oh uh, yeah, to tell you the truth, I live in Busan, but my office is, uh, is located in Ulsan. Cool, so I'm just going to ask Dad some questions and I'm going to ask Kitty some questions. Is that okay? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, would you rather learn a new language or would you rather learn a new musical instrument? Uh, for me, uh, I hope to run English more deeply because uh, except English I don't want to run another language because my English abilities are not perfect and uh, and also I'm not satisfied with my English abilities I think you're pretty so, good you're pretty good pretty good yeah pretty good but yeah <laughs> I have to be excellent and, I understand uh, I totally understand yeah because uh, and I to be excellent too. Yeah, uh, because uh, my daughter is also interested in learning English, and she always takes after me, takes after my English abilities such <laughs> as idiom or pronunciations, expressions. Sure. So like time flies. I have to be a good <laughs> model. Yeah, I have to be a good model for her. I think and you then, are a great role, role model. What are some things that? someone can do to prepare themselves before moving to a foreign country? Uh, there are lots of stuff to prepare, but I recommend that uh, yes. please minimize the stuff because uh, <laughs> okay. at that time uh, we use public transportation sure. uh, without taxi. So we are just working. We were just working in the street 
and uh, with with our backpack so it was so heavy so i would write uh, recommend that uh, reduce your clothes clothes because uh, you can buy uh, simple and cheap clothes in foreign country <sighs> as well don't don't make your schedule tightly because uh, some accident and event which we can expect can be happened anytime so please relax and uh, leave yourself in another environment naturally really good i want to ask you one more question but i'll, I'll save it for later i want to talk to kitty is that okay kitty can i ask you a question kitty okay all right June is evidently not as confident speaking English despite having a good foundation of the English language. He has very good listening skills in English and this is depicted by the manner in which he responds to questions in English. Um, his grammar sounds very natural and his sentences flow in a very concise and easy to understand manner despite the occasional mix up of words, tenses or phrases. I would encourage June that he is definitely on the road to being excellent at English and he can do this by introducing English um, more into his daily routine such as listening to the news in English or even speaking to friends or family in English more often. Kitty, do you have any brothers or sisters? No, I don't have any siblings. Oh, okay. You're you're the only one. Yeah. You're the superstar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> only one is enough for me. Okay, I understand. Kitty, what's your favorite season? I love all the seasons. <laughs> okay. You like them all? Yeah. Do you prefer cats or dogs? I prefer cats. Why do you prefer cats? Because cats are cute. You don't think dogs are cute? I don't like dogs. They bark at me. Okay, that that's a good answer. So you think cats are cute, and it's easier to play with cats. Dogs are loud and they bark. Tell me about your favorite movie. My favorite movie is Frozen. Frozen. Why do you like Frozen? Because there's all snow and princesses, and I love adventure stories. Wow. <laughs> Great answer. So maybe because of Frozen, you like the winter, the winter time, right? Sometimes when it snows. Does it get very cold in Busan in the winter? Um, it gets colder, but it doesn't snow a lot. Uh, do you wish it would snow more? Yeah. Because you want to so make a I snowman. snowman. And the carrot for a nose and the stick for a mouse. Oh, you got you got you have an you have the plan. You made the plan, right? You know exactly what you're gonna do. Great. Yeah. Nice. Okay. In the future, Kitty uh, wants to be a scientist. 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 Nice. You're so <laughs> smart, Kitty. Yeah, really. It's true. <laughs> All right then. Well, have a really really nice weekend. And uh, bye bye. See you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Kitty is evidently very comfortable and self-assured in her English ability. She has a very good understanding of English for her age, and this is a very good foundation to grow and improve upon. She had minor challenges with pronunciation of words such as seasons and cute, and she can grow into improving her pronunciation of words um, just by introducing English into her daily routine such as watching English movies or um, reading English books but I would nevertheless encourage her to continue on the path of learning and practicing as she is and she will see great learning success in English. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Did you enjoy this video? Should I make more like it? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.